performing these cortical exorcisms, as they call it, and they've not done any psychological evaluation of any of those individuals. Now, that to me is barbaric. And they should be held, they should be held accountable and thrown in jail for it. Well, yeah, because these people may, may have, just like you said, multiple disorder, multiple personality disorders, schizophrenia, um, you know, PTSD, um, at the, you know, things like that. And this is like something that you, it's almost like walking in and saying, I am a licensed doctor and I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, do brain surgery on you. <laughs> um, and, and, and not only brain surgery, but I can do irrevocable harm to you. Yes, yes. Oh, my God. I mean, that's so scary. And, you know, and plus there's a lot of people that are in this community that just, that what they do is they go and they investigate a house. They get excited. They get a case. They go out. They don't really do any kind of actual research on the location. They just, oh, they charge up their equipment. They're ready to go. They go into this location, and they stir a bunch of stuff up and just leave these poor people. Never to return for any type of, uh, conclusion or any further follow-up help or, you know, making sure that the, the family is happy and, and, you know, peaceful again or any of that, you know, and that's another issue that, that could open the door for for other entities, and that's another thing I was going to ask you about is, you know, Robert Murch and a lot of these people are friends of mine, and I've been really trying to educate myself on what is the difference between a Ouija board um, and and any other type of communication device. What are your thoughts on the Ouija board? Have you had, like, issues with, you know, people, like, opening up portals or something and evil things coming through it because of the Ouija board? I mean, have, has that been an issue? Not only that, but also digital recorders or, or any type of device. I don't care. See, I don't care what device it is. It doesn't matter what it is. If it gives you in, immediate interaction with a spirit that is unknown, then you are apt, that is a, that is welcoming. See, see, people, you got to understand, when you're dealing with demonic attachment, a demonic infestation, certainly demonic possession, you have to have an invitation there. And so when, uh, as soon as you say, is there someone here, show me, show me a sign, show me that you're here, you've opened the door. That's, that's an invitation. And so if you're going to have immediate interaction with whatever, it's amazing we tell kids all the time not to speak to strangers. Don't speak to strangers because we don't know their intent. Paranormal investigators do it all the time. All the time. <laughs> exactly. We really do. And and demons can also, and we've learned through, you know this through lots of research and, of course, watching all the shows and stuff like that, but, you know, Demons can also, like you said, mask themselves as, as a loved one. Yeah, and, they yeah, they often do that. They play tricks with you. They they call yeah. them tricksters, actually. Is that not they're, correct? Well, they're, they're, they're tricksters for the whole sole purpose of having you invite them. For example, they also they appear often as children. So people have EVPs of kids. They're like, oh, isn't that cute? It sounds like a kid. Let's have it. Let's continue. And the demonic is sitting back saying, yes, let's continue. Uh huh. Very interesting. Um, because you know, I've a lot of children spirits seem to do that with me. Uh, you know, like follow me around um, when I'm on investigations. Uh, younger or you know, kids always follow. I guess me or are attached to me for some reason. I, I do protection prayers before and after. Um, because I'm very strong in, in that, in my faith, and I let the spirits know that, you know, that we come in love and light, and we do not want anything dark, and we're not trying to upset any spirits. We're very respectful to the spirit world. That's, that's one thing that I, I'm that's very big with that. Okay. And that's very nice that you do that, but demonic entities don't play by the rules. So the uh -huh. fact that hey, I'm, I, I give myself protection, but yet you're also putting the Lord your God to test. So you got to understand that the minute that you step into a place that has alleged demonic activity, the minute that you do that, you, you know, you can surround yourself with the most protective cage in the world. But once you go in the water and there's great white circling you, you got to understand that th that cage can be weakened. But because the fact that you, that, you, that you pray, I pray all my, 
anytime I go into a, a true exorcism, I certainly pray. I spend 14 days of doing extreme prayer and fasting. But I also know that the minute that I walk into that place, my body is vulnerable. And anybody who says, well, and I'm not implying that you, but people say this to me all the time, well, I prayed so therefore I know I'm covered. No, because you're walking into the lion's den. You can't go there and say, well, I'm going to pray, I'm going to put the Lord of God in my test, and nothing's going to happen. It doesn't work that way. It just it doesn't. And so every day, every time that I go into a place that I know that there is a possession, I know that I may not walk out. I know that my soul is right with God. But I also know that my body is, is easily saying, Jamie, Jamie, are, are you there? The minute that I do that, the minute that I invite them, you can do all the prayers you want. That's when you have an attachment. Uh -huh. So they, they, do, they, do play on your, they do play on your emotions as far as definitely masking themselves as somebody that you miss, say, my mom or my best friend or something, and, and that way I'll be like, oh, yeah. Pray and pray and pray, which is good. But, the, but see, that's, what, I mean, that's, that's where the fallacy in logic goes, because people think, well, I'm going to pray and pray and pray and pray, and I know I'm going to be protected, but yet I'm going to open the doors to invitation. But no, wait a minute, you can't have it both ways. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. So if, if you're going to pray, 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 that's good, then stay away from it. Because the minute that you go into it and you open the doors, then you've invited it. Mm. Wow. That's kind of that's kind of hard on somebody who really, really likes doing what I do. <laughs> you know what I mean? When, when I want that answers, and, and the answers that we may be looking for, we may never get because the demons may come in and, and tell us a bunch of a mess, you know? Well, have you ever found uh, yourself so drawn to a place you can't even, you can't think about any, you become obsessed to it? Mm, not really, not yet. Um, I've, I've had people that they became so obsessed and I immediately told him, said, you, you, better, you better take a step back and look what you're doing. You, you, you are developing an attachment to that place. So you uh -huh. are major doors. You, you got you know, you to watch that. And so, boy, that's happened to many friends that I've had. That's wild. You know, going into these places, and, you know, a lot of these places, being a having abilities where I can pick up on people's emotions or being an empath or whatever you want to, you know, label it. Um, I've always been able to do that even when my mom was sick, even when something was up between my parents and they were trying to hide it. I mean, I always picked up on things like that. I do that with people and, and spirits too. But even going into these places and, and a lot of these places, I find people are just really kind of, and I'm not trying to be ugly, but they're just kind of wanting entertainment for the evening. Like, sure. They've seen all the shows, and they want us to come in there. And, you know, since it doesn't cost them anything, you know, why not? And we're so eager to go out there, and, you know, we think all this stuff's going on, and then we go set up all of our equipment, and we get absolutely nothing, not even a, a feeling or whatever. And it's like, oh, y'all didn't get anything? Y'all sure y'all didn't get anything? Because we get touched and all that. No, we, you know, not even a thing, not even feeling anything. Um, do you think a lot of this, Phrase, I guess, for for investigations has been because of all the the hype on TV and that people really just want to be entertained, so they make up crazy stuff and and claim demonic or they need help right away. A lot of times, just for attention. I mean, oh yeah, I, I think so. Because you know, a lot of it used to be really, and I'm, I'm sure it's still pretty rough. But I, the teams, it seems like a lot of people are just quick to run to YouTube and post, you know, look what we found, look what we found, and yet forget about the fact that there was a family involved in what they found. I always tell people that if you're going to go into someone's house, you better be pastoral. And you know, I don't care what your faith is. I don't care if someone wants to worship a rock. That's their business. But when you go into someone's home, I, you, you, people better be pastoral. And that means you, better, you, you always make sure you put the needs and the comfort of the clients far before any type of, oh, we got to run to YouTube and post, you know, look at how wonderful we are and look at all the information we captured. Because there's, people are going to have to answer for that. 
You know, yeah. people, people go to people's houses and stir up trouble just for the sole purpose of getting stuff on, on film and then leave with no resolution for this poor family. I would hate to be in their shoes. Yeah, definitely. That's that's a, that's another thing. You know, we when we go do any type of walk through research, do an investigation, we always follow follow up. We always are, you know, tell them what's going on. We're still reviewing. We haven't gotten anything yet. When we do, we'll let you know. We'll come back out. We'll show you whatever. If you're still having issues, we'll come out till they're gone. I mean, we had to go out to this one lady's house like three different times, and you know. It wasn't close or anything, but you know, hey, she needed to. She needed that resolution. It wasn't for us to just go out there and play, and none of none of anything that we ever. I don't even hardly ever put anything on on um, on Facebook or YouTube or anything about my private cases because that's why they're private, and that's why they should stay. Um, now you can put something up there and go in an undisclosed location, you know, as long as there's no things on there, but normally I just don't put stuff up there like that, and we always try to make sure the client is satisfied and, and, you know, make sure that they are sleeping well at night and that they feel safe again in their home, and, you know, whatever we have to do or whoever we have to involve in a case, whether it be, you know, a Native American that comes out and, and makes some sort of offering to the, the land or whatever, because maybe it's a Native American that's kind of upset with what's happening to their property or whatever, I mean, or if it's you know, if we need to escalate it into something like we've never had to actually call you, thank God. <laughs> you know, which is good. But, um, you know, we haven't really dealt with a whole lot of ugly cases like that. Um, so, I mean, I, I knock on wood, I hope that we don't have to because I don't like seeing anybody having to deal with a nasty entity, much less where it escalates to where you have to be, you know, have an exorcist. Um but I'm glad that you're around. Um, I, I appreciate what you do. Um, Chip, Chip and Greta speak highly of you. Um, when I told them, yeah, you know, they do. And, you know, I also wanted to ask you um, kind of because of all the stuff that's going around Facebook on the LGBT page and everything like that about marriage. And, and then, you know, you got my Huckabee doing this, that, and the other and saying this, that, and the other. What is your stance on, because I've been married to, to, you know, mine for almost 19 years coming up here in September, and, you know, I, I mean, I think that gay people should be able to be married and, and like my straight friend said earlier, be miserable just like we are, <laughs> so what what's your stance on that? I mean, do you feel like everyone should have the right to choose that, or, or no? I've had my debates with people who are uh, anti-gay marriage, and I asked them one question. I asked them, how many people, how many gay couples got married in Iowa today? And they don't know the answer to the question. And I say, so what you're telling me is that their marriage really doesn't affect you, but yet you want to have the power to affect their marriage. I said, that's really arrogant, if you ask me. You know, it, the, the fact of the matter is, is... Um, Oh, well, the United States Old Catholic Church, the church that I belong to, strongly supports uh, LGBT rights. We perform marriages in, in states that allow it, commitment ceremonies. As a matter of fact, one of the priests, uh, in, in the, one of my priests, is, uh, is married uh, to, a, to, a, to a man, obviously. They got married in Indiana. Um, people don't understand Leviticus. Uh, they like to throw Leviticus. Man shall I not lie down with another man for it's an abomination. They should not inherit the kingdom of heaven. See, they love to throw that away. But they, they throw, they, but yet they eat shrimp, they eat pork, they mix cottons. They don't blow the uh, the trumpets, the young kumpur. And of course, uh, of course, that's all about the little Leviticus code, the holiness code. And so they don't talk. They, they just take just bits and pieces so they can actually throw out abuses against the homosexuals. But do you know Leviticus 19? Do you know what? What that passage was about, the one that they always talk about, a man should not lie down with another man for it's an abomination. Do you know what that was about? No. It had nothing to do with sex. Nothing at all. And, if, and see, theologians who are actually trained, who study theology and understand history, would know this. It had everything to do with doing only the, only the imagio of Yahweh. 
the image of Yahweh. Because, okay, for then at that time, when that passage was written, there were a lot of false idols. People would create false idols, false gods, and then they would try to, you know, say, well, I, I'm going to have this God do this for me, and that God do this for me, and this God put a curse on your God. I mean, a lot of false, false gods going on at that time.